So we know that uh, your Ohm's law, so let's start with the first one. Okay, so Ohm's law by definition is actually, okay, uh, is expressed by this equation, J equals sigma E, where J is the current density on your conductor, sigma is the conductivity of your conductor, and E is the electric field on your conductor. And from this, by a series of uh, relationships between current density, current, and depends on the, uh, depends on your uh, conductor itself, this is rewritten as V equals IR, where V is the potential difference across your resistor R, and I is the current. So in this case, the resistor, uh, the resistance of your resistor is a function of the geometry and type of your material. So for example, if we have, uh, for example, if we have a conductor, a cylindrical conductor like this, Okay. So if you have a cylindrical conductor like this, and it is defined by your cross-sectional area A, this is your cross-sectional area A, this is the length of your conductor, in this direction is your, uh, uh, this, this direction is the direction of your G. So therefore, this is also the direction of your electric field. And this has a, a Conductivity or ah, conductivity sigma or resistivity rho. So from example number seven point one, the resistance R is given by uh, L over sigma A or R equals L over A, where sigma is the conductivity and rho is the resistivity. The relationship between the conductivity and, their, and your resistivity is that they are reciprocal of each, other, of each other, okay? So that means this resistance R, okay, depends on the type of the material used given by your conductivity and the dimensions of your conductor. So if we have, for example, a, a coaxial cable, just like in example 7.2, uh, the resistance, uh, the resistance of your coaxial cable is given by uh, Ln of V over A divided by two pi sigma times L, where B and A, 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 A are the inner and outer, uh, outer and inner uh, radius of your L is the length of your coaxial cable, Sigma is the conductivity. Okay, so as you will notice that 
the resistance of a conductor will depend on the it will it will depend on the the dimensions and the material okay you can do this for any kind of conductor so in order to find the resistance of resistor and it always comes from this equation j equals sigma e. okay now as your charges move through your conductor energy is used up uh, it's related to what we call your joule we're in the work done by the electrical force okay amount of charge because we know that the power delivered it is just the derivative of the work with respect to time. So this is the power delivered in a uniform potential difference B. Okay, a plugging in this equation here. We ended up with V. This derivative, uh, this yields to the, the, the more familiar equation for power. So we call this your joule. This is the power dissipated through a resistor. Okay. As I mentioned before, your resistor uses up the energy provided by the electric field. Okay, so that's the first part of your uh, uh, first part of your uh, electrodynamics chapter. Now, if, for example, we, we also talked about Because the motional EMF, this motional EMF. So, for example, a loop of wire like this, and then it is in the region of a magnetic field. B the flux or the magnetic flux in this context P is the flux through the surface of this conductor and this is defined as the integral of B dot E A so this is the same uh, same form of the equation if we consider electric flux from Gauss law, and this is integral of E dot dA. Okay, so this flux, if the flux on a loop changes with time, what is being produced is what we call your motional EMF E, wherein the motional EMF is equal to negative derivative of your magnetic flux with respect to time. Some general physics books call this the Faraday's law of electromagnetic induction. 
However, this is not the full form or the official form of Faraday's law of electromagnetic induction. This only provides us the idea that if the flux on a loop changes, there is an induced EMF or motional EMF, and that EMF produced in the Okay, now formally, your Faraday's law of electromagnetic induction directly relates electric field and magnetic field. In its integral form, Faraday's law of electromagnetic induction is given by uh, the line integral on a closed loop of the electric field. So this closed loop is the loop of this conductor. So the electric, the line integral of the electric field through this loop is actually related to your a potential, and this is equal to the negative integral of the changes in the magnetic field with respect to time, and then you dotted it with area vector. So this is the Faraday's law of electromagnetic induction in integral form. So this explains that a changing magnetic field provides an electric field. Okay. We can also express this in its differential form via Stokes theorem. And uh, using Stokes theorem, we can rewrite this integral form as its differential form, where in the curl of the electric field, it's just equal to the time derivative of your magnetic field. So this is a more clear picture that a changing magnetic field you say changing magnetic field, the magnetic field changes with time, it will produce an electric field. Okay, so that's the basic idea of our this law. Okay, and this is the fourth uh, major equation that we need to uh, learn by heart. Okay, together with Gauss law. Uh, together with the divergence of the magnetic field, as well as Ampere's law, where it relates to the curl of your magnetic field. Okay, and we're going to summarize those four, four equations in the coming weeks and its implication. Finally, okay, finally we also talked about inductance. Okay, so when you see inductance, okay, we have to consider first that um, if you have two loops like this, okay, remember that if a loop is subject to a magnetic field, EMF in, is induced. Now, from a uh, Salbert law, we know that a loop that carries a current will produce a magnetic field. So that means this magnetic field can be due to a current. So, for example, if we have two currents here, and let's say this current, a current in this wire, in this loop, let's call that I1, so that's, that means this is loop number one, and this is loop number two. So because this loop carries a current I, this will produce a magnetic field. And that magnetic field can be, can influence your second loop. Okay, so due to the magnetic field created by the first loop, 
flux is apparent on the second loop. And the flux on the second loop will be equal to the integral of the magnetic field caused by the first loop dotted with dA of the loop 2. Okay? And by a series of, and this is also equal to the product of M and I1. What is I1? I1 is the current on the first loop. And M is a proportionality constant. We call this your mutual inductance. Okay, so by definition, so by uh, by uh, as per as per discussion, the magnetic inductance, uh, the mutual inductance between one and two, are the same. It doesn't matter whether it is loop one that creates that induces a current on loop two or loop 2 is the one that induces current on loop 3, uh, on loop 1, because these are the same. This mutual inductance is a purely geometric quantity that depends on the sizes and shapes and relative positions of your, of the two loops. Now, by a series of, this, uh, by a series of uh, calculations from the videos that I showed you, the reverse effect can happen wherein the current on the second loop let's call this i2 can produce a magnetic field and that magnetic field b2 created by i2 is the one that induces, we call this your mutual inductance. So the flux will now be equal to, a flux on uh, flux on loop 1 will now be equal to M, that's the mutual inductance. Uh, produce uh, current in the second loop. Okay? So if this uh, flux changes, we produce what we call an induced electric field, uh, induced EMF. And again, by a series of uh, calculations, this induced EMF in the loop is equal to negative L times the derivative of I with respect to time, where L is what we call the inductance. Just like your resistance, and capacitance, inductance is an in intrinsic positive quantity of a device. So from this equation, it tells us that the greater the inductance is, the harder it is to change the current. Because your EMF is the same, the higher the inductance is, the lower the changes in the uh, current with respect to time. The unit of L is uh, Henry. 